Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv. Today I want to show you how to make squiggly line animations with Animate CC that can be exported as video, GIF, or HTML5 canvas. I recently saw a tweet from Rachel Neighbors that brought attention to the many different animation styles in this Teen Titans Go video. I said to myself, hey, it would be great to show folks how easy this is to do, so I came with this little project to walk you through. Check out my spooky ghost. And then this ghost came and was all, I am the man! Ooh, scary. Let me show you how easy it is to set up something like this with Animate CC. Normal daddy! Alright, so before we begin, let's just go over my basic document setup here. I have my blank stage that's orange. I have some layers in my timeline for my ghost, my text. The audio is already in there, and I have some labels set up for where the voiceover is going to say, I am and the mad. So if I play this animation as is, and then this ghost came and was all, I am the man. All right, so what we want to do now is synchronize an animation with that voiceover. The focus today is going to be on how do we draw this squiggly wiggly type of animation. So I'm going to take my brush tool with a fill of white, and I'm going to draw a very rough outline of a ghost, sort of like a Pac-Man ghost from back in the day. All right, and the idea here is that we do not need to be pretty or precise. In fact, the rougher and more horrible this drawing is, uh, sort of the better, all right? It's a perfect style for someone who is an artist like myself, okay? So here I have this very basic ghost shape. I'm gonna select that shape I just drew, and I'm gonna go to Modify, Convert to Symbol. Once I convert it into a symbol, it's gonna become an asset that I can reuse multiple times in my animation. I'm just gonna name it Ghost, and I'm gonna make sure the type is set to Graphic. I'm gonna hit OK. And then now I have an object on the stage that I can animate, and I can also go inside of it and create an animation. So let me show you how that looks. I'm gonna double click on that symbol, and now I'm inside the ghost's timeline, so to speak, where I can have my own layers and my own keyframes. So I'm gonna add a layer above where I drew this white shape, and I'm gonna use that layer to draw some facial details, like eyes and a mouth. So in this top layer, inside the ghost, I'm just gonna draw a little eye, another little eye, and a cute little mouth and make them kind of sad. All right, so there's frame one of my ghost. Now the secret to this style of animation is that I want to have multiple frames of this ghost hand drawn that are very similar, but just a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is go to frame two and draw another copy of the ghost by hand. So with these two frames selected, I'm gonna hit F7, which is going to insert blank keyframes so that I can do stuff in frame number two that doesn't affect frame number one. Now the problem here is that in frame number two, I wanna draw my ghost very much the same size and shape as he was in frame one. But with the playhead in frame two, I can't see what's in frame one. But check this out. I'm gonna go back to frame two where there's nothing and I'm going to turn on onion skinning, which is going to give me a ghosted, oh my goodness, a ghosted out version of my ghost. All right, so with the playhead in frame two, I can sort of see the size and shape of the ghost in frame one. This is really cool. I'm gonna to go to the bottom layer in frame two here. I'm gonna select white as my brush color, and I'm gonna draw the ghost again, roughly following the way I drew him in frame one. Not exactly, I want there to be some variance so that we can get a little bit of a shake going on. And I'm just gonna fill him in as roughly as I can here. All right, so again, the idea here is that it's not pretty and it's not perfect. We can have some of these little gaps and holes. All right, excellent. So now that I have the basic white body drawn, I'm gonna to go to the top layer in frame two. I'm gonna change my brush color over to black, and I'm gonna draw the eyes again, just sort of close to the way they were in frame one. The mouth though, I'm gonna make a little bit bigger and menacing, all right? Just like that. I'm gonna turn off the onion skinning, so you can see that in frame one, he looks like this. Frame two, he looks like that. Now the issue we're gonna have is that this movie is set up to play at 30 frames per second. And with these frames so close together, he's gonna to be jumping back and forth really quick. So let me go back to scene number one, and let me go to frame one, and let me just play through by hitting return. And then this ghost came and was all, I 
And you see how much he was shaking? He was just like freaking out like back and forth really quick. So the solution to that is that we just need to have more time in between those two different states. So I'm gonna double click on him to go into the ghost timeline. And in frame one, I'm going to hit F5 to just add some frames in between those two states. I'm gonna to go to frame five here. And by hitting F5, we'll add some frames after the second state. And we want the timing to be the same keyframe and then we have some static frames following. Go back to scene number one and I'm gonna play and then this ghost came and was all I am the man and you'll see now that it's much easier to watch and looks really cool. So now that we have our ghost squiggling in place let's move him around have him jump on our face and scare us. So out at frame number 45 I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of F6 to add a new keyframe. That allows me to take the ghost in frame number 45, move him to the right without affecting his position in frame one. So in frame one, he's on the left, frame 45, he's on the right, and I'm going to right click and do a create classic tween so that animate will draw all those in between frames for me. So you'll see as I'm scrubbing, you can see him changing his expression and going back and forth between his two drawn states. When we get to the IM frame, I'm going to F6 again for a new keyframe. And I'm gonna do a jump cut here, grab him over here, hit Q to get my transform tool. And we're just going to make him bigger and scarier. And when we get to the frame for the mad around frame 93, I'm going to again add a new keyframe, which is going to allow me to change his position in this frame without affecting the previous frame. We're gonna rotate him and make him really big. Like you're gonna jump out of your seats when you see this thing run. So let me jump back to the beginning and now let's play. And then this ghost came and was all, I am the man. Ah! Awesome, all right, what'd that take? Two or three minutes? Uh, let's spice it up a little bit with some text. So in my library, I already went ahead and made text for I am and the man. And both of these are graphic symbols that have two states. So text I am, we can play it. And you'll see if I double click on it actually, that it's made the same way as the ghost. In frame one, I wrote I am really sketchy. And then in frame five, I wrote it sort of similar. All right, so there's a little bit of wiggle going on there in the text as well. Back in the main timeline, I'm going to go to the frame for I am. In the text layer, I'm gonna hit F6 to add a keyframe so that I can take I am and place it right there at that point in time on the timeline. And I'm going to go to the, the mad frame. I'm gonna hit F7, which is gonna give me a blank keyframe, all right? That's gonna give me a clean canvas without the word I am in there. And I'm gonna take text the mad and put a new symbol in that frame. And it's sized almost perfectly. So check this out. Let's go back to the beginning. And let's play. And then this ghost came and was all, I am the man. Awesome. In just a few minutes, we recreated this hand-drawn squiggly animation effect. And yeah, if I was a better artist, I'd take like five more minutes and make the ghost look really cool. But the idea here is that you don't need to be totally skilled. You don't need to be a coder. You don't need to be a programmer. Uh, if you have an idea, you want to bring it to life, Animate CC is really a great tool to do that, okay? Um, you can export your animations as GIFs, as videos, and even as an HTML5 canvas animation that'll run in a browser without any plugins. So check this out. I'm just gonna hit Command Return. And then this ghost came and was all, I am the man. All right, so there it was playing in a web browser. All right, I'm really trying to keep this under 10 minutes. So if you want to learn more about Animate CC and see other cool videos like this on how to make fun things with Animate, why don't you just subscribe to this channel, like this video, and head on over to snorkel.tv where I will be posting more and more information. All right, see you soon. Bye. Snorkel.tv.